think uh, we can start. Okay, so welcome to our today's event. So before we begin, some information that this session will be recorded um, and you can use the chat for Q&A and I will collect your questions and there will be dedicated time for, uh, for discussion after the presentations. So the topic for of today's meeting is citation and their meaning or why we cite with Silvio Peroni, some information about Silvio. He holds a PhD in computer science. He is an associate professor at the Department of Classical Philology and Italian Studies in University of Bologna, when he also teaches computer science and open science in several courses. He is also the director of the International and Second Cycle Degree in Digital Humanities and Digital Knowledge and of Open Citation, uh, which is an open science infrastructure. His work con mainly concerns, um, sorry about that, uh, his work mainly concerns theoretical studies and technical implementation of tools to foster semantic interoperability of open science services and infrastructures and the development of systems to manage integrate and query bibliographic information and cultural heritage data. So briefly, uh, the agenda for today, first video will present the different dynamics behind citation, will introduce us to existing data models for classifying citation intents that they use in RASP OS, and he will present the tool briefly that they are developing to extract citation semantics from scholarly articles in PDF format. After that, um, you can make your questions in the speaker or uh, you can write it in the chat. And if we have time, there will be three questions for you to better understand the content of the presentation. So, Silvia. Thank you. Thank you for, for, the, <laughs> for the introduction and uh, welcome all. Good afternoon to all. Um, so today I will... Uh, start discussing about this topic of citations that I have to say uh, has characterized my entire research in the past 10 years, well, actually 14 years. Um, and uh, uh, and to show you also the, the first release of a tool that we are developing in the context of Braspo as exactly for dealing with this activity of extracting citations from literature. Uh, but before uh, starting, uh, let me uh, uh, say a big thank you to uh, these five guys here, uh, Angelo, Ivan, Olga, Lorenz, and Marta, that since the beginning of the project uh, have uh, helped mm, the group in itself by developing the majority of the things that I'm going to show you today. Um, and so I would like to start with acknowledgements at the very beginning, because I think it is uh, appropriate, you know, uh, this is not my work, it is a joint collaboration of minds that working together was able to produce what I'm going to present today. And before going discussing about the tools and even going starting to discuss about citations, I would like to, to provide a bunch of clarifications on terminology here. And this is, I think, an important thing to do because a lot of times when I talk with colleagues, we tend to use the same term to refer to a plenty of different things within the ecosystem of the scholarly domain. And in particular, there is this concept of a reference that we use for a plenty of different stuff with different semantics, by the way. For instance, we can sometimes when we talk with a colleague about one specific article we have in mind uh, that we would like to mention in our uh, work, we talk about it as the reference, a reference to mention. And that is a word that we use for one article. For other articles, we tend to say reference for identifying them. Then if you focus, if we focus on the content of a certain article. We uh, often have specific uh, pieces of the text there, like the one that I'm just highlighted, uh, that has the name of the authors followed by uh, the date of publication with some pages, as in this case, sometimes just an integer number between square parentheses. And we, we, tend, to, we, we tend to call it a reference again, 
Then at the very end of a paper, often we have a specific section that usually is uh, entitled references or bibliography, where we have a lot of stuff there. Each of them uh, contains descriptive information about uh, something that we mentioned within our paper, and we used to call it, again, a reference. And finally, just to make add a bit more of complexity there, uh, the, the relation that may exist between two articles in this case, for instance, uh, we used to call it a citation. Actually, that is not entirely true because depending on our own experience, uh, citation and references are used as terms in an interchangeable way. So some something of the things that I've mentioned are references. Sometimes I refer it with citations and vice versa. So this is the current scenario that when personally I have to discuss with colleagues, we are in this setting. And that makes the discussion a bit confusing, in my opinion, because it's not clear what I refer to when I mention those two words. So a, a few years ago, I started in collaboration with David Shatton to develop a series of ontologies for clarifying the vocabulary for defining all these different aspects. And we came up with a reasonable vocabulary with definitions that should allow, uh, a, a, let's say, a person to speak with another without ambiguities in which uh, things I'm referring to. And I like to start usually with that specific part, the part with the authors followed by the, the year of publication uh, that we call in-text reference pointer. That in-text reference pointer is a crucial textual device within a scholarly paper and that denotes uh, a bibliographic reference that we usually list in a specific section of an article at the very end of it, or sometimes in a footnote, but that's the idea. So that in-text reference pointer denotes a bibliographic reference that is a descriptive, uh, contains a descriptive elements that actually references to the actual thing out there, a specific paper we are mentioning somehow in our specific content. Now, these textual devices here, so the index reference point, the bibliographic reference, and the fact that there is a relation between the index reference point and the bibliographic reference, and be, between the bibliographic reference and the actual paper, that reference, that bibliographic reference references, are the textual devices that allow us to create a special link that is that that defines the citation. So, Thanks to these textual, textual devices, we can infer that link that say that the top article here cites the bottom article in the slides. That specific relations brings additional role into the game for the articles that are involved. In particular, we have the top article being the citing entity and the bottom article being the cited entity of that relation. So they have a specific role in the context of the citations I'm creating. In addition, since it is sensitive for this specific uh, discussion here, uh, we say that the specific textual content where the index reference pointer uh, denoting a bibliographic reference is referencing a cited entity is uh, mentioned in the text is actually definable as the citation context. So the textual content where the citation is happening it can be one sentence, can be a series of sentences, a paragraph that depends on the choices of the specific user. So these are the terms that I'm going to use during the entire session in order to present the various uh, peculiar things of this domain. So an additional thing that is a kind of, uh, let's say, peculiar uh, way of thinking that open citations as an infrastructure as, as brought in is that uh, we consider citations, every single citation, as a first class data entity. That means that it is not just a link connected, connecting to entities, but the citations that we represent in our system is a proper entity per se, 
that has a specific persistent identifier associ associated, which is defined by means of this open citation identifier uh, that has been documented in a specific standard document uploaded on FigShare. I don't want to add additional information here, but there are a lot of documentation in the open citations website. And that being a citation, a proper entity, that allow us to interlink, to add metadata to that citations, including what what is the citing entity of the citation? In this case, the article that I've mentioned before, that is a journal article in this context. What is the citing entity of the citation? In that case, the bottom article of the previous slide, that is a preceding paper, and additional metadata that may include the citation creation date, the, the, the citation time window, the time span between the publication date of the citing and the citing entity, and additional information. But for the focus of this session, the important metadata I would like to discuss here is that one that can be associated by means of a specific uh, relation property that is has citation characterization. What is this citation characterization? So uh, the point, technically speaking, as author, as researchers, we cite another work usually, hopefully, <laughs> for a certain reason. So the point is that I'm citing someone else, sometimes because I want to acknowledge the work that is that the authors of the work have done in a specific context, sometimes because I want to reuse a method that, that is described in the cited entity in my own work, sometimes because I want to criticize uh, some claim that someone else has done. So the reason for citing may vary a lot. And these, let's say, for in order to model the different kinds uh, of reason, the different semantics that a citation may have, the actual intent or citation intent that a citation may have, in the past, several researchers have developed uh, annotation schemes that have been proposed for uh, labeling citations semantically according to different dimensions. Uh, in the article that I've just uh, linked there, uh, the one by Kunat et, et al., there was a, a very uh, good summary of the major, the, the major, the, the, the major uh, annotation schemes that have been developed in the past 30 years to be used by researchers there. Why? having such a citation graph labeled with the citation semantics, with the citation intent for each single citation may be important. Well, for several reasons, but to me, one of the most important thing here is that having this colored citation graph, labeled citation graph, allows you to, to study how articles, but also authors, interact with each other, identifying path citation patterns out there, and how a work has been relevant for a specific community, how that specific uh, uh, work may have been considered by the community in time. It happens a lot of time that at the very beginning, maybe I'm just reusing somehow in my own work the conclusion that comes from a specific article, and maybe in time, actually, the conclusions are not valid anymore, but I start to reuse the method introduced there for doing additional other research and so on. Just to make an a very simple example here, uh, we have done these kind of studies in specific works where we have analyzed, it, analyzed how uh, the, the, the way of citing a paper that has been retracted may change in time. Okay, and here, for instance, there are a bunch of examples, two sets of uh, citation intents. One is critics alone, and the other one is a, a group of citation intents that includes obtain support from, use conclu uses conclusions from, extends, update, uses data from. In order to analyze how uh, retraction may have changed the way the, the reason for citing that specific article that has been retracted, these analysis has been done in particular on a very famous retracted article by Wakefield et al. That is the reference of this study in the, in, in the slide. And as you can see, P1 means the period where no retraction happened. P2 is the period after 
the partial retraction and P3 is the period after the full retraction. As you can see, the critics' uh, citation semantics was almost uh, non-present in P1 when the paper was not retracted and increased after the retraction. Vice versa, obtained support from and the other set of uh, citation intents were very present at the very beginning uh, when the paper was not retract retracted with a very positive connotation and suddenly disappeared after the the uh, the, uh, the paper was retracted. This is just to show you which kind of analysis, an example of a kind of analysis we can do having these informations there. Um, in the past, among the various models that are available, uh, within the context of the SPAR ontologies, which is uh, a specific ontological model uh, that uh, actually an ecosystem of ontological models that we have developed since 2010 for describing the scholarly domain in general, within this set of ontologies, there is one specific ontology that the ontology was one of the first one developed. It is named Citation Typing Ontology that allows you, it provides kind of vocabulary to mark the semantics of citations, so citation intents, uh, by a plethora of different intents. There are more than 40 different intents include, included in the ontology that have been derived by empirical analysis of the articles with the, their authors, with the publishers, and so on. Um, in practice, Cite allow to create metadata that describes the citations that includes inf all the information that I've mentioned before and also to characterize this citation intent. And it allows to formalize this description of citations, including the citation intent by means of RDF, which is a very well-known data model that provides formats that are semantically oriented, very well uh, um, processed and processable and actionable by machines in a way that these data can be also analyzed and reused not only by humans, of course, but also by, by machines. Um, CITO in the past has been adopted in a bunch of different scenarios. I just want to, to put here two examples that are kind of recent examples. Uh, for instance, in a, in, a, uh, in a specific journal that was a journal of chemical informatics, a few years ago, ran a pilot where the authors were all allowed to mark their own citations in the paper according to the uh, citation intents included in CITO in order to create this network of labeled citation semantics, let's say. Uh, it ran for two years just to see, and there are a lot of annotations that now are included in the journals themselves. So they are packed within the journal article itself. And another example is Scolia that instead use this kind of annotation of site annotations that have been created within Wikidata. So Wikidata kind of imported citation types, citation intents included in Cito within the, this database in order to be reused for annotating bibliographic uh, resources there, actually citations between bibliographic resources, and Scolia, that is a user interface that have been developed for showcasing bibliographic resources included in Wiki. Wikidata has a specific panel that is has been screenshot, the screenshot I've just added here, that allow you to measure how much citation a certain work has received and what is the type of the citations, the intent of the citations that has been received according to uh, how much information is included in Wikidata. So this is the kind of situation about CITO, which is the ontology, the model that we are using within Grasp OS for developing the tool that I'm going to introduce in a few slides here. However, uh, there is for sure a problem, and that has been indeed also highlighted by the pilot of the journal that I've just mentioned. They have done the pilot, but then it is in order to have, uh, uh, let's say, a uh, let's say, uh, a data set of labeled citation with citation intents that is usable and useful, uh, we need to mark a, a huge amount of citations there. And uh, the point is that uh, allowing authors of the articles, but even readers, to do this annotation by hand 
uh, is very time consuming and as you can imagine doesn't scale because we have to uh, to to get a PDF, extract the citations there, mark them down with a specific citation intent. That takes time and it is very time consuming. So uh, we, we started to think about on how to try to, in principle, automatize the process in order to retrieve by using a machine, this network of citations. There is also another issue, by the way, about in addition to this uh, difficult to scale. And the, the issue is uh, well highlighted by a study that we did a bunch of years ago, 10 years ago, where we involved 20 different people, researchers, in annotating each of them the same 105 citations. We asked them to annotate those citations with citation intent included in CITO, and we, we grouped the people in two groups. Uh, 10 annotators used 41 citation intents included in CITO, and other 10 annotators used only 10 citation intents included in CITO in order to see if the, the number of uh, available intents that you can use for marking citations was a factor there for having uh, good results in terms also of agreement or not. Beside all the problems that we have identified, the fact that it was a plain list as a lot of, honestly, of these kind of uh, annotation schemes of, uh, so for citations, a plain list of different intents, uh, uh, the user perceived kind of overlappings between some of the intents that were enough close. Um, there were the, the need of more examples to see how to use a specific intent for the marking and, all, and of course for the users of the, the 41 citation intents from CITO, there was a clear evidence that, well, maybe they are too much uh, to, to, to fully understand and to fully use in the context. But the funny thing is that independently from the number of intents used by the user, the inter-rater agreement of the annotation provided by the annotators was very low for both the situations. Uh, that was a good, a good, a good, a good test, a good analysis. We, uh, that allowed us to to come up with some lesson learned from the study. And among the lesson learned, we have identified that we need to focus on the most used citation intents for sure. That should be limited, a small amount of it. And second, we need to have one single neutral intent. Uh, that is a kind of residual category. So the idea here is that if you have a list of intent and no one applied to the situation, you need to have a, a, a residual intent that is a very general one, an abstract one, where you can say, okay, then this is the situation that the other doesn't apply, so we have a generic intent here. Um, to this end, we started again an experimentation within Grasp OS uh, that is derived from the insights of these experiments and also from um, several existing data sets that have been made available in the past. In particular, we have used strongly the size site data set, and we experimented by using only four citations intent uh, that are obtains background from, uses method in, uses conclusions from, and sites for information that is our neutral citation intent. Uh, by means of these four, let's say, uh, different citation intent, we created a pipeline. In order to do this activity of annotating citations from scratch, starting from a PDF representing a scholarly article, which is our input. Uh, the pipeline works as follows. The PDF is processed by uh, a tool that is a citation extractor, which is a tool based on Grobit, our site. That tool provides in output three different set of files, a JSON file with the citation sentences, that is the citation context that contains only the sentence that includes the in-text reference pointer of a certain, referring to a certain citations there. Then an XML file it is a TEI file actually containing the structure of the paper as extracted from the PDF. And finally, uh, the same structure represented 
in RDF according to a specific model that is the Open Citations Data Model, which is the data model that we have created within Open Citations and that, that we use for uh, exposing all the data that we uh, have uh, included in our collection. Starting from this output, this output, and in particular the citation synthesis, so the JSON file and the RDF file becomes the input of the citation intent classifier that takes every single citation sentence and try to plug, to, to mark each citation with uh, a specific citation function or citation intent. Uh, this tool provides you and use JSON with the citation functions slash intents. Function and intents are synonymous in this context. Uh, specified plus the paper structure in RDF enriched by these citation functions that have been highlighted. And as I anticipated, the citation function that we used are the four that I've mentioned before. This pipeline has been implemented uh, in a specific code which is available in a code base on GitHub, which is, has been released by using an open source license, the ISC license that you can download. This is the alpha version right now, but we are going to publish the beta version in the following weeks with additional functionalities there. And uh, it is based by two different tools, the citation extractor, that is the one that starts from the PDF and provides a structured version of that scholarly article in a way that is pro easily processable and the citation intent classifier uh, that allow to associate the citation intent to each single citation extracted by the first tool. Just to clarify, these two tools are included in the pipeline, but they can be used also separately. So if you want just to extract information, citation information from there, you can just use the first tool. If you have already citation sentences available, you can just use the second tool to classify them, just to clarify this. Um, we train the two tools. Uh, the first one that is the citation extractor is based on Grobit models. We have developed uh, an additional set of um, let's say training material that are structured, the scholarly article that we have used to improve the performances of Grobit for our specific context. The, the gold standard that we have used also to test, but also to, uh, um, in, in, let's say, uh, train additionally Grobit is has been published on Zenodo a few times ago. And we are going to produce an extended version of this data set very soon with additional information still to the goal is to improve the way Grobit extract information there in order to have better extractor tool in terms of accuracy. And they, in citation intent classifier, instead it has been trained using the site site data set as, as mentioned before, and it is based on ensemble strategies that incorporates language model. Um, I don't want to add additional information here. I think it is out of to topic for this specific uh, session, but the, 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 there is a preprint that we have um, just published on archive if you are if you are curious about additional information about the citation intent classifier and the performances that we have obtained so far with this. So uh, now is the time of the live demo, so everything will break, I'm pretty sure, because there is this idea of demo effect. But just let me let me try to to do something here. So I I, I have in my uh, in a test machine uh, a specific uh, oh sorry a specific uh, tool. Both the tools available. So let me just uh, get the PDF starting PDF. So we have this PDF file. It's just a, as you can see a research article. Okay. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, the idea here is just to, oh, sorry, to, to take the article and to put it here in the interface in order to allow the system to process it. I also check this perform semantic alignment of section headings. The idea is that it tries by reading the section headings that headings that are extracted by the tool to align basically uh, the uh, the semantics of of the of the thing. Um, 
think that is better to open it from here. Here we are, selected and then process file. You see that uh, the, the, the tool is processing. What it is happening here, technically speaking, is that uh, the system are taking the PDF file in input. The PDF file is passed through Brobit that is composed by several different models there. Each model is responsible to extract specific parts of the information of an article. There is a model dedicated to the bibliographic references that try to extract the bibliographic references from the article. So the, the guys that you can see here at the very end, uh, in order to then also provide specific, to recognize the specific metadata of each single bibliographic reference. So identifying what are the authors, what is the title, what is the, the venue where the article has been published and so on and so forth. Uh, other models of Grobit are responsible, for instance, to extract all other kind of information like the metadata of the citing article or of the article here. So the, the name of the journal, the title of the article, the authors of this article, and this kind of information. Uh, you see that the process usually takes one minute, one minute and a half for each article here, and it has produced a zip file that I can open here and by accessing it, you have the right now two files. One is the TEI created by, uh, by Grobit, which is the structured version, as you can see here, uh, of the information extracted from the article. And then we have also JSON file that contains the citations, uh, the citation sentence, the section where they have been uh, uh, put in the original paper and so on. Then by using this JSON, you can technically speaking, uh, run the second tool that is the intent classifier. So here we can just go through, uh, here we are, to this specific JSON file that has been extracted, uh, that has been extracted by the tool and then classify JSON. And then uh, it needs a bunch of time in order to retrieve the, the citation intent. What happens here technically is that it will run several models that try to recognize citation intents. Actually, um, each single citation intent considered has attached one single mo one model that allow to recognize only that specific citation intent. We have so uh, several models uh, one for each language model, actually. So six different models that two dedicated to recognize uh, citation intents for use method in, one for obtains uh, conclusion uh, background from, one's from users conclusion from. So we have several models working uh, all together for defining if the specific citation sentence is indeed uh, how much it is a citation of that specific kind of intent or another. Then there is a model that tried to get, to do a summary of all these different an annotations provided by the single model and to choose the final annotation that will be provided as output of the system. And as you can see here, this is exactly what happened. Sentence uh, uh, was, this sentence was included in an introduction, sorry. Um, this is the citation sentence and the final prediction here beside all the various, uh, as you can see, probability uh, done by the all the models that are there. The final prediction is the one that actually the system returned that that sentence obtains background from. So the idea is that the citing entity obtains background from the uh, um, publication denoted by this bibliographic reference, this uh, in-text reference pointer here. And that has been done basically for all the citations that have been extracted. Uh, not, there is not only all obtains become forum, as you can see, there is also uh, all the other, um, let's say, citation intent that we consider that have been uh, extracted from the system. We have a use method in here. We do have here, uh, let me check, use conclusion from. We do have also, uh, um, somewhere sites for information that is the residual category. I have to find it, but I don't know where it is. And then at the very end, you can also download the JSON file. 
the JSON file that define this extraction here. So you, as you can see here, if I open it, you can see that here there is a JSON file that contains exactly all these information that are shown there uh, in the in the in the in the in the web tool. So this is just a very brief, as I anticipated, uh, demo of the tool that we have developed. Uh, of course, we are going to release additional version of the tool. The beta release will be uh, uh, up and running in a few weeks, and we will continue anyway to improve the tool, uh, as I told you, by uh, training the different parts to have better results. In particular, what we are doing right now is to develop an in-depth documentation to enable anyone to install the system and use it in our own in your own machine we are developing rest apis in order to access programmat programmatically both the tools so the idea is that you can make available uh with just one click a web server that exposes rest api uh that then can be used by other applications for running the tool and extracting this kind of information also, we are working on a client-based uh, interface that allow to launch the tool, one of the two tools or all together from shell. Uh, we are uh, developing uh, also the possibility of getting more than one PDF as input. The idea here is just you can provide more than one PDF or a zip file with a lot of PDF there to uh, allow the system to process all of them in one shot, even if the process will be one after the other, of course. And also, this is exactly something that I was discussing with the guys today. Uh, the exporting to RDF according to the Open Citations Data Model is not yet available as a feature, but we are working on it right now, exactly to allow also to expose this data as RDF data. And so in potentially to be included within the web as linked data material. And that was the last uh, thing I wanted to show you. So I stop sharing right now. And I'm very happy if there are any questions. From Thank Julia. you. Thank you, Silvio, and for this interesting presentation and about introducing us in these tools from a PDF format, academic papers, to how to extract actually the citations and what happened behind the scenes <laughs> with the software. So now you can submit your questions um, or through the chat or raising uh, your hand. So there is already a question in the chat. So I will okay. try to, to try to address it uh, by Joanna. And uh, could you please provide examples for how Open Citation is used incorporating your research assessment process? Uh, one million dollar question. Uh, okay, um, let's say that. Uh, from a research perspective, myself, but not only myself, also other colleagues around uh, working in scientometrics have tried to, to use open citations in the context of research assessment exercises just to see how it works. I mean, they are just tests. They, are, according to my personal knowledge, I'm not sure they are uh, technically included in existing uh, research, research assessment exercise done by some entity. But I have to say that in the context of RASP OS, uh, there have been uh, uh, run a bunch of um, uh, experimentation in order to get, uh, in particular, citation count uh, of existing articles. So this information is something that open citations already provide. Um, uh, as a uh, within the API, actually, we are extending the API in order to provide specific counts that are needs that have been raised by several meetings that we had with a lot of partners of GraspOS in the past year, year and a half, and in particular, uh, the cumulative citation count counts by venue was something that we have uh, recently worked on, and we are experimenting right now. Uh, and that is an additional operation that we added to the API that seems to be uh, useful for uh, for some of the case studies included in GraspOS for what concern research assessment exercise. Of course, it is difficult to understand 
how we will be used there because depending on the final goal of the research assessment, the usage of open citation data may vary. Uh, this tool that we have provided is just an additional possibility to extract citations that maybe are not included in any index, including ourselves. I mean, the tool itself is a tool that is not currently integrated in the open citation workflow. So you can use even outside it. You can gather additional citations from articles that maybe are not already included in our system. But in addition to that, you can also have semantics of the citations. And how these semantics would be used in research assessment is something that should be analyzed case study per case studies, if that is the case. It's not something that we, uh, let's say, impose open citation from open citation side. I'm not aware of, but maybe it's my missing, honestly, of user usages of these kind of semantics in research assessment exercise. But that is the possibility we are providing the tool in principle, uh, in perspective in particular, for also use this kind of information in this context. Um, I see there are additional questions in the chat. Uh, so, uh, Jeroen first, can we say, oh, sorry, can we say that citation function, citation in sense, citation sentiment, citation role are the same thing? Uh, that's a good, very good question, because depending on the research article, they may be perceived as the same thing, and sometimes, actually, they has, have slightly different semantics. Uh, that is a huge problem, vocabulary problem that we have solved for the, the terms that are around the citations, but not for this specific thing. So I'm, let's say that citation function and citation intent, uh, I will say that they are uh, synonymous, according to my personal experience, in also reading literature. For what concerns citation sentiment, well, uh, to me, the sentiment is more related to if the, the, the citation is a positive, negative, or neutral one. To me, this one is another dimension. So it is possible that a citation function may convey a specific sentiment kind of automatically. Let's say critics. Uh, so a paper critics another one, maybe a negative somehow sentiment, but this is not always true, depends a lot on the context. Sometimes critics may be even positive in a way, no? So I think that the sentiment and the function are two different dimensions here to consider. For what concern the role? Well, what role means in general is not to me an easy thing to address. Uh, the role of a citation in the context of the paper to me may be a different thing from the intent. Sometimes with role, we define, for instance, what is the role of a citation in the context of the, of, the, of the paper? Is that important or less important as a role? Or does it have, uh, let's say, the means of supporting or backing the narrative of the study? Or it is just, uh, let's say, uh, contextual that I have to put there, but just to provide context and that is not purely functional to support the results that I've done in that specific context. So I think the role is a broader uh, dimension here and may change according to the specific, even the specific annotation scheme that you are considering. So um, it's not a simple system, I will say there. The paper that I've, I've uh, suggested in the slide that uh, provide a, a good review of all these aspects, let's say, that separate all of them in a way, uh, could be a good starting point, but it's not, uh, let's say, a straightforward discussion. In particular, we still have kind of ambiguities among the different levels here, I will say. Um, so following question, how much citation context is taking into account in the tool? Yes, that, that is the easiest one. Uh, currently, uh, we are considering the just the citation sentence. So where is the index reference point of that sentence there? Um, but there are studies uh, available that uh, show that sometimes for some situation having more context, like, I don't know, a sentence before the citation centers or a sentence after would be valuable in some uh, situations. Um, we are trying 
to understand this is some matter of future works for the tool to understand if uh, e extending the citation context may bring better results in the annotations sometimes, but this is something that we haven't yet investigated. So let's say for the tool right now, just the citation sentence is the, the, the thing to consider. Um, then there is another question, is open citation only works with DOI? Okay. Uh, or which other metadata information is establishing nature of citation. So here, there are, I think, two different aspects here. So open citations as an infrastructure uh, doesn't consider only DOIs. We do have additional identifiers there. We have PubMed, uh, PubMed ID, PubMed Central ID, Open Alex ID, um, Archive ID, in some cases. So we have a plethora of different identifiers, not only DOI. Indeed, the citations that we have are not anymore DOI to DOI citations, but are any to any uh, ID citations. For that reason, we have our internal identifier, which is uh, the open citations meta identifier or OMID that we use for internally referring to a specific article there. And the idea of that OMID is that in principle, it, we, it allows us, us to add uh, information about specific uh, articles that even do not have any, any uh, formal ID specified because we have our internal identified. Um, for what concern other metadata, metadata, metadata information, uh, metadata information uh, used for uh, identifying the nature of citations. Right now, we do not use this kind of information because we are basically basic, basing the entire system on analyzing the citation sentence. And actually that's the only additional metadata I will consider. And uh, the um, uh, title of the section that has been actually the semantics of the section that have been identified where the citation is included, the, the section of the paper where the citation is included, that is extracted by the, the first tool, the citation extractor tool. Uh, however, uh, one of the future works of this, uh, for what concerns the citation intent uh, identifier, um, is also to mix up these language models with knowledge graph embeddings that we want to derive from uh, the RDF graph produced by the extraction phase. And that RDF graph contains plenty of info metadata information of the citing article and all the cited articles. So the idea is to use somehow also these informations in the future as uh, uh, knowledge graph embeddings coupled with language models to try to have better performances in the citation classification of the intents. But right now, we are not using it. We have just experimented it uh, outside the tool, let's say. Uh, so I hope I answered that. Um, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, how to calculate the probability a particular paper in the references, uh, okay. I don't. I didn't understand the question clearly. So, what is the probability of particular paper in the references? I don't know if uh, if Cell could. Can you clarify a bit that question? Even taking the mic, if you prefer, without any problem. Uh, and in the, the meantime, I'm I'm going. Uh, afterwards, there is another question. Let's say, okay, let's say that, let's say as an institute, I want to ev evaluate the citation performance of research. How will this be useful for evaluators? Uh, that is the future plan of the software. The evaluators just want to see basic numbers as, ah. Um, okay, um, second question by Selkuk. Uh, I think I'm the wrong person to ask it, honestly. <laughs> so, um, 
um, we developed tools and I, I had that I'm so lucky to run any fantastic open science infrastructure that is open citations that provide to me the means for evaluators for come up with metrics, indicators, then to assess research. But ho ho very honestly, I, as a director of open citations, and even as a researcher in doing tools, I would like to avoid to enter in that very discussion. It's not my, my job, let's say. I'm not an expert. I'm not the guy expert in understanding what is the better indicators to use for proxy a certain uh, dimension for evaluating a certain researcher. So that's why I'm not sure I'm the right person to answer it. Then uh, on a personal side, using just H index for evaluating a person, I truly believe that is not exactly the way to go, but by experience, not by, 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 by being an expert of these specific kind of studies. So the goal of open citations and also of the tools that we have developed is to provide the means to evaluators in principle to create metrics or new metrics in case, uh, but not, I do, uh, we avoid to enter in that discussion because we, I don't have the expertise, honestly, to, to address it uh, properly. That's my, so sorry for being a negative answer in the end, but. <laughs> Uh, for the slides, no problem at all. Uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, as I already answered, but I will upload them on the uh, on the node as well. So uh, everything will be uh, after this session. I will upload them, so no problem at all. And, let me and Silvia, before proceeding in the for, in the next question, actually the first uh, question from uh, uh, Silsuk, if I pronounce it uh, better, yeah. is. He answered that ah. in the summary of classifier tasks. I, I see, I see, I see, I see. So we are talking about uh, basically, no, no, here. Here, uh, the, the, this value here. Okay, uh, I got it. So, so, sorry, Salsa, um, I, I didn't get the point. Uh, so it means basically is the result. So that probability, let me take the example here. Each single uh, line here uh, is uh, that of a, a, a model that is uh, as being included in the workflow of the intent classification. So here the idea is how much uh, here is the probability that, uh, for instance, here uh, the cyber train with the side uh, sci side. Uh, data set uh, has to assign as use method in as an intent to that specific citation. And as you can see here, the probability of that assignment by cyber use method in intent for that specific citation is very low because it, it goes from zero to one. Instead, here, this is it uses background from citation intent. How much is the probability that that specific sentence and citations bring that specific citation intent? And as you can see here, the probability is very high. Now, by collecting all these probability from Cybert and XLNet, the, so these six different models that we are using, then we built up, basically speaking, ensemble of the various, uh, the various um, ensemble, let's say confidence of the various uh, citation intents. As you can see, the ensemble of the uh, obtains background from is very, very high here. And that's probably why the final uh, model select obtain background from as the final uh, intent to return for this citation set. So that probability is just the result of the probability of assigning that citation intent to that specific citations, considering that specific language model uh, that we trained. I hope I've clarified that aspect. Uh, I missed all the questions. So there was 
question from Julia. Are you aware if based on where the citation is, the citation may have different value? Uh, yes, indeed, the reason why we included in this analysis, uh, in this tool, sorry, uh, the, the, the citation, sorry, the, the, the section name, and in particular, the section semantics that we are trying to uh, uh, extract from the name, uh, is exactly to improve uh, we have seen that when we have the titles of the section and the section semantics, the 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 mapping the 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 the, say the, the, the marking up of the citation intents to citation is slightly better, meaning that where the citation happens uh, adds information to do a better job for what concerns the citation classification. But this information in terms of uh, the say results is included in the paper attached, so you have a clear uh, view of how much that improved the the, the performance is exactly there. Um, uh, the probability is that one. So, um, if citation refers to a specific page of the cited object, could we in future progress on inferring relations at the level of section paragraphs of the citing and cited paper instead of relation? Between the entire paper, yeah, that is to me the final goal, honestly. Uh, it's not just a network of paper. Uh, we should have a network of uh, excerpts from papers because an excerpt cites not the entire paper, but a passage in the cited paper. And so it would be great to have that specific modeling in place I have also to say that the basic ontological models that we use that are the SPAR ontologies already provide the means for creating this detailed description of citation networks between not only papers to papers, but even excerpt to excerpt. So from a modeling point of view, we are ready to map this kind of information in RDF format since Years, honestly, is one of the first things I've modeled personally because I was very interested about it with David Shatton. But then to have automatic tool that perform that specific activity is another matter. And they start, that, that is the other problem from the availability of the full text of the citing and the cited article as well, because we have to process both. And that's, as you know, bringing additional problems related to the availability of open access material out there that is not exactly easy to solve. We are going in that direction, but long shot, I will say. But yes, I would. that's the final idea, in my opinion. And then, do cite, uh, Charlie Chen, do, do data citation work similarly or do you think it's a completely different ball game? Uh, oh yeah, um, good question. Uh, I don't have the answer. Uh, I do not think they work similarly to paper to paper citations. This is my feeling, but it's just a, a, an intuition, a perception. Uh, there have been already a bunch of works done in the past, uh, done on data citations instead of uh, uh, paper citations, let's say. Um, also because the way of citing data is slightly different, not always the data are included as proper citations in the text. So uh, sometimes they have been just mentioned uh, in the content of a paper, not properly formally cited there. So there is a huge variability, I would say, of situations there. Uh, I don't think they, they, they are, should be treated in the same way. Uh, but that is not something for me as a, a tool for a researcher building tools for, but for people studying these dynamics using data. So what I can say is that open citations does not include only uh, paper to paper citations there, includes also paper to data citations. Uh, they are limited right now for sure. But there are a bunch of them, also because we import data sites, sites citations there. So a bunch of citations are between paper to data are indeed included. But also from OpenAir, for instance, there is Call Explorer that also includes a lot of uh, uh, data to data citation links included there, data to software, software to data, and so on. So there are plenty of sources already available 
open sources already available there that may be used for studying that specific network of citations that goes to something that is not a traditional article, but also to uh, other kind of uh, types, let's say, of, of data. There are also uh, projects right now that try to extract paper to software citations that are very interesting to analyze and they have a different value for sure in the context of this kind of analysis. So I know that the time is over, but uh, I may go, go ahead with the last questions. So there is just one last question that this type of research and development has enormous potential in analysis of scientific literature, expanding dimension. Okay, it's just a comment, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you for supporting it. So thank you everyone. Thank you again, uh, Silvio and everyone for participating. I share with you a feedback form. Uh, if you can uh, dedicate one minute to fill the form as we want to improve and uh, deliver more insightful events. So that is all. You can also, you always can uh, contact Silvio or Open Air for more questions. So thank you all for participating. Have a nice Thank day. You. Thank you all. Thank you for being here. Bye.